Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want to welcome you to another installment here of my channel. I am of course as always Freakazoid67216, and I do hope you are having yourself a wonderful good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on where you are in the world and what time of day it is you're watching this video. Now, in this video, I'm going to be continuing on my installment creation of Star Trek Online. Um, in the previous video that I did, it was talking about doing a character creation. So this is going to be that next step in getting your account set up. So without further ado, let's go on ahead and jump into the video. This video is brought to you by CLX Gaming. Are you interested in building a or getting a new computer but don't know exactly who to go through or not sure of your own personal skills and building a custom PC? Then why not stop by CLX Gaming and let them build it for you? With systems starting at a baseline price of about $600, they can custom build any PC for you on how you want it. From AMD to Intel CPUs, from Radon to NVIDIA graphics. With additional components from companies like Corsair, G-Skill, and much, much more. Each one of their full systems are tested and configured, including the installation of the operating system and other components by a team of highly trained builders and backed with a full labor of parts and warranty for one full year with a 30-day exchange warranty on all other components including bare bones computers without an operating system installed so come on by clx gaming by clicking on the link in the description below and let them build your system for you all right guys so in this particular video that we're going to be making we're going to be going over some of the more in-depth um discussions about the game so like i mentioned this i'm going to be using my primary character her name is sukat the name was pre-selected because i did the randomization on the character creation about 11 years ago and yes, I, do, I can officially say about 11 years ago because I started playing this game right around the start of 2011. Anyway, the first thing we're going to be going over is going to be, for that more in-depth, advanced option, is going to be your armor and your weapons. Now, this does, again, boil down to personal play preference. But you do have to take into account some very specific things depending on the mission that you're going to go into. Now, seeing as how this is a game based off of the Star Trek timeline, there are going to be Borg that you will have to fight. So if you're going into a ground combat scenario, you are going to need to have this, which is a craftable item. And in a future episode, we'll go over exactly where that's, you know, where that came from. You'll want to make sure that you have that either in your inventory or equipped to your character. So the reason for that is because of the fact that with the Borg, when you're in combat, if you're using some form of an energy weapon, they will adapt to the frequency of that. So having that in your inventory will help change your frequency of your weapons being used. Generally, you do have to have it equipped when you're fighting them or having some kind of an ability off of an armor set that you're wearing or some other kind of unique ability which helps refresh your energy weapons frequencies so that way you can continue battling without a whole lot of stopping now this is always one of those if you can manage to get a hold of it i definitely recommend getting a hold of something that's going to have more physical damage instead of energy based damage when you're battling the Borg because they can't adapt to it and just like from the movie First Contact oh. 
this particular weapon will kind of bypass the shields to an extent and damage the target directly. So that's always a bonus to have when battling a Borg. Your kit modules are things that you can get a hold of from either unique missions, lockboxes, or special events that you attach to your character. You can have a maximum of five to have unique abilities when in combat. Like that one, it is a uh, Polaron Bombardment. Otherwise, uh, best way to describe it is Artillery Strike. This one, where I can assimilate an enemy when it's been defeated, works really well against uh, NPCs for ground, so that way I have a little combat pet. They'll stay in for a set period of time, and then they disappear. This one is an uh, like an Orbital Strike, but... That one's a little bit more advanced. With that one, when I'm fighting, when I lock to a different target, that beam moves to that target and stays over them until it's destroyed and then just sits there until I target something else. Then it moves to that target and continues to go until the timer dissipates. These are uh, defense uh, towers, basically, or like turrets. Like the the uh, obelisk towers that, from, that were from the... Uh, discovery tv series and this right here is beneficial because when i'm using this anyone on my team when i use this adapt for a brief period of time their shields have adapted to the enemy's weapons frequencies so they become immune from energy damage for a brief period of time which definitely helps in team-based combat your kits will give you specific abilities. And just like with this one, if you're wearing a three-part set, it gives you an, a, an additional ability that you can use while in ground. Your body armor is going to help protect you from specific energy types and help your health regeneration. And then of course your atypical shields, which will boost your overall defense from energy-based weapons and some kinetic weapons. So that's going to be more of your ground kits. Speaking of ground, just like when I mentioned previously in the last video, you have your skills that you'll have to assign. So I just quickly burned through these. If you realize you kind of made a mistake and you wanted to select on different options, you can always retrain your skills and it does not cost anything. You may end up losing one or two ground abilities during that time frame, but all you have to do is just go back through and reselect everything. Now, when you hit that retrain, it resets both ground and space, but it does not reselect uh, reset your specializations. Those will go through here in a minute when you're starting or when you've advanced to level 65 and you're selecting all of these skill points go through and select all of the lieutenant skills and there's reasons for it hull regeneration regeneration hull capacity shield regeneration shield capacity, weapons. And every single level after that point will have a certain set. As you can see, you have a total of 46 points to use for space, and that's the max you can earn. So you'll want to be very precise on what you select. And the same thing can be said for ground. I would recommend at least spending the first four on unlocking all four of them then kind of looking to see what's going to go where once you've gotten everything associated with it you'll have buffs that you can select on towards you have a total of 10 
10 is going to be the max right now unless the developers add more points to it but then they would have to try to modify these uh, afterwards but again that goes down to per, uh, play preference so let me go ahead and then get mine set up here real quick and then i'll be right back all right now that i've got all of my skills set as you can see you know, I kind of looked over everything to see what's going to be what. I already went through and did all the lieutenant. And after the lieutenant, I kind of went and looked over what was going to be more beneficial for me. Um, when it comes to space combat, under personal recommendation, it is always better to increase your critical chance over your critical severity if you manage to get a successful critical chance that's going to give a higher damage rating when your hit is successful your crit severity is how strong the damage is going to be once it's successful so i always recommend improving critical chance over critical severity because it's it's difficult to improve that than it is to improve your crit severity. You can get consoles to boost your crit severity without a without a problem, and they do a lot of increase towards it. Your critical chance it's a lot lower of a of an increase. So work on critical chance more than critical severity. Shield damage that's going to be necessary because that uh, as far as like for that one for your shield hardness that's going to help improve your sh uh, starship's shields for defense uh, starship regenerate shield regeneration as you can see I kind of botched that one a little bit I didn't put all my points into that but that's fine I can get consoles to improve that so I'm not worried about that Hull plating to improve my overall hull strength when in combat, just in case if they manage to go through my shields. Uh, points to my subsystems for weapons and shields and other stuff. Recharge bonus. Critical hit uh, to try to help prevent those from incoming. Science recharge abilities from my science officers. Tactical recharge abilities. Uh, for my uh, tactical officers, the recharge abilities for engineering officers when you use their abilities. So it is always one of those. It is a good idea. Just like I said, max out your lieutenant skills because that's going to go for your shield strength, your hull points, your hull regeneration, your shield regeneration, your weapons bonus, and your like for your energy and your torpedoes and the increase of those every single one of those that you unlock afterwards take the time read every single one of those if once you hit 65 you want to reset all those like i said just hit that retrain skill reset it same can be said for ground kind of read over every one of those to see what it's going to do i always focus more on space than ground only because of the fact I've always preferred space combat over ground combat. The specializations is going to be something that I will go through in another video because that's going to be a little bit more in-depth. Right now, these are going to be your main things to focus on as a starting player. Once you've got your skills set, you're going to want to select for your, for your traits which where a lot of those skills will come from for your ground for your space and for your starship so the simplest one which is going to be starship because there's you don't start out with a lot the further you go into the game the more you'll get when um unlocking them from either missions lock boxes or unique events so just like i was mentioning when it comes to the skills you want to kind of read them over to see what they're going to do. Once you've kind of determined what they are, using specific attack patterns, grants hull healing, this 
I love using this because when I use evasive maneuvers, I eject warp plasma at the back end of the ship, which does cause a area of effect damage. And then if I need to change them up, I can always go through and change them up afterwards. The same is going to be for your uh, for your space traits. Just kind of read them over. Once you get them unlocked, more of them will come uh, from lockboxes. Some of these you can buy from the exchange, so you'll have to start building up energy credits. I love using that one. This one's actually useful. This one did come from a lockbox. Whenever I'm in combat, I have a chance of summoning, summoning in little swarmer ships. And I love using this because it's, it's almost always successful. And they stack up to so many times. So I can have multiple coming in, almost like additional combat pets or, or hangar pets or fighters. Now, these are all going to go under play style. So if you want to do the more DPS, you know, you'll need to start going for things that's going to increase your damage on attack. Same thing's going to be for ground. Now, these are all going to be bonuses from the reputation. I'll kind of go all over the reputation stuff here after a bit, but as you can see, like super skimming through everything, this character, I've maxed out all the different reputation tabs, so I have a lot of stuff to choose from for space, for ground, for active abilities for ground, and active abilities for space. Now this is what I'm meaning by reputation. As you can see, whenever you unlock that level, there's six to work on right now. Doesn't mean they might not add another one later, but once you unlock it, that goes towards your character as like a possible option. And every single reputation tab, and there's a lot to choose from, is going to have abilities. Once you've maxed it out, some of these get enhanced even further. All right, so that kind of goes over part one, I would say, of the advanced abilities and settings for Star Trek Online and kind of a, a how to play. Uh, the next one that I go into, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into the reputation system as well as the specialization like I showed previously. Um, if you do want to kind of go over that one with me, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can be alerted when that content does come available. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, you know, give it the thumbs down. If you have any comments or um, topics you want me to go over in a future video, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, down below, I do generally try to stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Twitch. I will leave my link to my Twitch account to or my profile where you can find me down below. Um, I generally stream from about noon to 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and occasionally I will do like a bonus weekend stream. I might be doing some additional bonus evening streams with a uh, uh, friend of mine that uh, also plays the game. So make sure you stay tuned to my channel for that one. I'll also put his link to his channel down below so that way you guys can kind of help support him because um, he could definitely use the support. I'll also leave my Twitter and my Facebook link down below and the link to the sponsor of this video, which was uh, just like showed previously, CLX Gaming. You guys take care. Have yourselves a wonderful upcoming holiday, and I shall see you in the next one.